trying to think where I want to start because I'm trying to remember what all we talked about out there. You ready? So now we're going to look at the more modern loom. But I'm saying that kind of with a smile because these looms that I have in here are 100 years old. But they're still exactly like the kind that you would buy right now. These looms are all 100 years old. They're the exact same model. I have three of them. They were sold through the Montgomery Ward and the Sears Roebuck catalogs about 1914 to 1916. So if you want to come over here, you can see what we talk about. When there's no thread on the loom, it has to be dressed. I had finished up with all the pretty yellow and orange warp threads that I had, so I put new white on here. There's 18 threads, and all 18 of them get wound on into each one of these little segments. And there's 12 segments, so if you do the math, 12 times 18 threads. And then I had to tie the knot of the white thread onto the yellow one, and I still haven't pulled them through. But if you look at these little wires, you can see there's a little bit of a hole there. And it's like the eye of a needle, so you're putting your thread right through that. The first thread goes in this one, and the second thread in the other, then the third, then the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. So that when I step on a pedal, you can see how the front one went up and the back one went down, and it opened it up really wide, and my threads can go through, my shuttle can go through, and I'll be weaving it. So as I'm dressing this loom, after I got the thread tied on, then I'm taking it and then tying onto this pole. And as I weave on it and need more space, I will release from back there. And each time I release, it goes from one set of pegs to the next. So I always get that much thread coming through. And then it winds up this hole that I have in here will end up coming around here and going down on the ropes and it'll wind up here. I'll make five or maybe even six rugs rolled up in there before I cut them off because every time you cut off you have to do this part of tying it over again and you use up your thread faster when you keep doing that. So I'll just keep making rugs and making rugs until the thing is, the roll down here is so big that I can't get my knees in there anymore. When I put the thread on, I have this handy little thing here that holds my thread and all of the threads, like I said, all 18 of them come down and go into one segment. When you're turning the handle to put them on there, you have to count very carefully because you want to do the same number of turns on each section because if you do one of them with not the same number, if it's got fewer, all of a sudden that one runs out and you can't finish even with the rest of them still having thread on it, you're done. So I'll show you on this loom over here, a rug that I'm working on. You put, after you get the warp threads on nice and tight, you put the fabric or the yarn that you're going to weave on a shuttle. And a shuttle just means something that takes you from one place to another, from one side to the other. If you want to come over here and get a really close shot, you can see that the last little bit of the fabric that I was working on came from that side and stopped right there. We cut the fabric at a point and then that point will lay in on top of it so it won't make one big thick lump. I don't want to tie it together or you'll feel that knot every time you step on it. So I'm going to slide, I've stepped on the pedal. Because the fabric was coming from the left, I have my foot on the left pedal and see how it's opened up real nicely. I can just slide the shuttle through and then rest it there. I'll pull it until the two points are kind of lined up, and I'm going to turn the fabric just a little bit so that the prettier dark green part is what's going to show. And that looks like a good place to line up. Then I use this called the beater bar, and I smash it into place, and I'm going to switch the petals and see how the other one is coming up now. And 
the threads have crisscrossed over that fabric that I just put in there and see it won't come out now. And now that I'm on this side, I have my foot down on the right pedal. And you just keep going back and forth and back and forth. The only hard part is learning how to turn the corners like this and don't let it pull because all of a sudden you won't have a nice straight line anymore. It'll be kind of angling in and you'll have a rug that goes to a point instead of staying as a rectangle. So you have to kind of just pull it back just a little bit, get it to where you want it, and then smash it again and switch feet again. And you just keep going and going. I'm making this rug special for myself and it's something new that I'm trying to do. Instead of just weaving a plain colored rug, as I'm weaving the white, I'm going in with little bits of other color. I hope that kind of looks like carrots because that's what it's supposed to be. And that's supposed to be like a head of lettuce or cabbage. And I also have on here a tomato and a red pepper and a yellow pepper and I have corn on the cob. So I decorate with vegetables in my kitchen and these are gonna be little rugs for in my kitchen. And I'm halfway through this one. I have one other rug just like it. See how it's rolled up down there? This other rug has different vegetables on it. And so I will do another section of white with a couple more vegetables. I think I'm gonna use this purple and make eggplant in the other section. And once I get that done, then I'll do another strip of green and then I'll end with the fringe. The reason this cardboard is in here is because this cardboard is covering the fringe for the rug that's already done. And the other piece of cardboard will be the fringe for the rug that I'm working on now. And when I get them all done, all I have to do is cut right between these and then I have a nice amount of fringe and I have to tie all the fringe because that's what keeps it from coming apart. And I'm going to show you a couple rugs over here that I've already finished. This is one that I just done on the other loom because it's got all the yellows and oranges. But you can see this yellow thread is over and under and over and under and over and under all the way through. And then it's tied in the knot. I take three pairs of the thread and tie it. I always do two threads side by side that way, in case one thread gets broken, maybe the other one won't break and unwind the whole thing. So this one is just made out of some little cotton fabric. This one, I had a fabric that I liked a lot with the colors, but I knew I didn't have enough of the mixed fabric, so I put some solid colors in with it. So that one's got stripes. This one is fleece, like blankets are made out of, and I put a piece of the fabric with it. One little scrap that I had left over, it's got Christmas cookies on the fabric. But when you cut it up and make it into the strips and weave it all together, you can't tell anymore what the pattern was. But it's nice and nice and thick. The really special ones that I like to work on are these shaggy ones. This is really the best kind of recycling. This is something that's from the factory where they make fabric and they cut it off and they were throwing it away. But it's really long pieces that's kind of like fringe. But it's not good enough to sew onto anything. It has to be inside the, the looms threads to hold it together. And I had a whole bunch of odds and ends that were in pretty oranges and browns and rust colors so I just used them to make a whole bunch of stripes in my rug and that rug is just about a yard long so that'll make a nice size for it somebody beside the bed or some a lot of people tell me they don't want to walk on my rugs because they're too pretty they would rather mm -hmm. put them where people don't step on them or use them kind of um, over something like on a piano bench or something just for extra pretty so I do all kinds of rugs. I even have made some rugs out of old plastic tablecloths. And then they're, you can just wipe them down and they're great for at the front door where you take your muddy shoes off and such. So weaving is a really great hobby. It lets me be artistic. It uses up old clothes and 
sheets and things like that when you weave them up and it helps keep a heritage art alive. You have to think about all the people way back in like 1900 and Little House on the Prairie days when they didn't have any way to just go and buy lots of fabric. They had to make their own fabric and they would do it on a loom. Then they would also cut the fabric up and sew their clothes. And once the clothes were worn out, then they would cut them up into strips and make a rag rug out of it. So you never threw anything away. You always kept finding some way to reuse it. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you get to come and see me sometime, and I'll let you see my looms in person. Bye-bye.